My name's Mike Gunson. I'm here in California at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and I'm delighted to take a, a, an opportunity to talk to you about carbon dioxide, something that I'm focused on studying with uh, satellite measurements. So, carbon dioxide, what is it? It's about the most stable form of carbon um, in, in, the, in the system. It's highly oxidized state, and it's part of everyday life. And uh, in this next chart, you can see a picture of where it plays a role everywhere from uh, yeah. it's important it's important in, in everyday life in terms of uh, it's so central to um, our lives that it's actually difficult to imagine how we can stop uh, a producing it or b uh, using it in 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 everything we do but it's also important because it's a greenhouse gas and I thought it's important for us to to spend a moment and look at what do what do greenhouse gases do, uh, and why are they important to life on Earth? It, if there was no atmosphere on the Earth, um, then the sun's sunlight would simply be reflected off the surface, and all that energy would uh, immediately go to space. So on the left hand side is a picture of the sun's energy. It's what heats that heats the Earth, and part of it is just simply reflected off cow tops, the first arrow that goes out. But an important part that reaches the surface, if it's not reflected off ice and back out of space, is actually heats the Earth's surface, and then that heat, at very long um, uh, in the infrared, is radiated back and is actually absorbed by gases in the atmosphere that raise the temperature, and then re-emit that energy imbalance either back down towards the surface, the arrows towards the far side on the right, or they're radiated back to space. Without an atmosphere, the Earth would be about 15 degrees centigrade, which, if I can do my conversions correctly, is about zero degrees Fahrenheit. We'd be an ice ball. If we, with the presence of an atmosphere, including greenhouse gases like water and carbon dioxide, the Earth is actually habitable at about 15 degrees centigrade, or about 60 degrees Fahrenheit on average. Uh, why are we concerned? Well, this is a famous um, figure created by, um, uh, I grabbed from the NOAA website, I've given that in the bottom right-hand corner, and it's a curve that I found when I visited, um, I, I hadn't known this, how important it was until I visited the National Academy of Sciences in Washington uh, a year or so ago. It's the only time I've ever been. But in the entrance hall there, in addition to pictures of the uh, double helix of DNA, and pictures of Darwin's finches is this curve. It's that important. It was started in uh, 1957 by the work of Charles Keeling, uh, who um, quite um, prescient is the word I was thinking of, but he, had a, he must have had some brilliant foresight to start making measurements from the top of Mauna Loa of the composition of air. Mauna Loa is actually uh, quite high, and he started make, grasping um, empty flasks, taking empty flasks up there, and, and, which were filled with air from uh, that location, taken back to his lab and analyzed for their composition. And he started building up this sequence of measurements, which has now been continued for the past uh, 50 m more years. And it's the basis of our understanding of why carbon dioxide is increasing in concentration in the atmosphere. So as you can see on the left, it starts in 1957, and I've taken the most recent uh, snapshot current to April of 2011. And you can see it's been rising steadily from a level when Charles Keeling started these measurements from about 315 parts per million, that's parts in a million, up to the current day levels, which are over about 390 parts per million. Uh, is this new? Uh, why the concern about carbon dioxide? And uh, a lot of climate skeptics I know have talked about um, setting this conversation as if it's really a new phenomena. And in actual fact, it isn't. If you look back, uh, uh, and it's kind of humbling because uh, we, we've not invented anything new here about the importance of carbon dioxide. We've just got new technology that allows us to do things, uh, study things far more uh, thoroughly perhaps or with more sophistication we've now got access to space 
but in the Victorian period, by which I mean 200 years ago, uh, scientists actually knew the importance of carbon dioxide. And a lot of very famous scientists, John Tyndall, the Irish physicist, and this is a, a paper by um, Svante August Arrhenius, a Swedish scientist, who published this paper, and you can read barely because it's such a bad reproduction, on the influence of carbonic acid in the air. They actually call carbon dioxide by its form it, as it's dissolved in water. And um, he, he studied or, or postulated that uh, carbon dioxide had critical influence on uh, absorbing radiation, heat in the atmosphere, and raising its temperature. And there were quite a few studies in that period which uh, showed its importance as a, green, uh, as a greenhouse gas. And that if it went if the amount of carbon dioxide or carbonic acid, as they knew it, uh, was raised, they suggested the air temperature would be raised. And this was more than a, um, two, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, these scientists started thinking about it.